Therapy is great, girl. Chef's kiss. And it reminds me that, hey, you are a little human on this earth. Relax. Relax. You are a human being that has emotions. Um, This is a reminder to, one, drink water. Two, take care of yourself. Three, put yourself first. I start getting very anxious and overwhelmed when I start thinking about my future or my past. Um, when I'm in the present. So I don't know why I'm thinking of the future of the past. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to another season of Suwana Self Care Sunday, season three. It's already been three seasons that I've done this series. If you guys didn't know, I'm on a self care, healing, health journey growth journey that I'm bringing you guys along in a different season and episode. I've been creating them in seasons depending on what I've been up to and kind of sharing my process and journey through different episodes. Uh, so today is episode one of season three and today's video we are going to be focusing on what I do on days that I feel anxious. First of all I've not been diagnosed with anxiety but I feel like I've been anxious a lot in my life hopefully want to get a diagnosis and maybe see if i do actually have anxiety so i just want to start off the video by saying that i have not been diagnosed with anxiety but i do feel anxious a lot of times and i kind of want to share with you guys what i do to feel less anxious so yeah i thought i could share hopefully these tips could maybe help you feel more calm feel more at peace um and hopefully less anxious so i thought i could share in this first episode so i'm just gonna list off a couple things that have helped me and i'll kind of update you guys on my hobbies and things that have helped me through anxious times so hopefully you'll enjoy this episode and learn a little something Let's continue growing and bettering ourselves and really taking care of ourselves because that's what's important um this is a reminder to one drink water two take care of yourself three put yourself first and let's get into it let's get into the episode all right so i have honestly i have a few activities that really help me when i'm feeling anxious and then i have a couple things that i do when i really need to calm my overthinking and anxious self um me what usually gets me in a like very anxious state is usually my overthinking self <laughs> Um, when I start overthinking of all the things that I'm not doing or that I want to do and I get super overwhelmed, that's when I get really anxious and I have this ball in my throat and I feel like I want to cry um, or die. Um, that's a dramatic. Mm, let's simmer down a little bit. But um, I kind of wanted to share what I do to help with my anxiety. So the first things that I'm going to dive into is more like the activities that I do. And that goes more into hobbies i guess you could say i feel like the moment that i had more hobbies i actually felt way more anxious one of the big factors of my stress anxiety was school <laughs> because i am a perfectionist i have social anxiety i have performance anxiety and school really just brought that out <laughs> it really brought that out in me when i finished school i was way less anxious so this is not your sign to drop out of school. Um, but I think I sat down with myself and I kind of realized like, what makes me so anxious? Like what makes me so stressed? So like overwhelmed that I literally can't think. Um, so when I finished school, I realized oh, I've been feeling less anxious and that was really great. But I also realized that I didn't have any activities, any hobbies to occupy my time if i wasn't working or doing school then i was just like sleeping or watching tv but it's like i need to be doing something valuable with my life <laughs> that sounds so bad but i hope you're i hope you're understanding what i'm saying so um a couple of activities that have really helped me with my anxiety with stress depression um and filling up my time and making me enjoy my own company and myself is reading journaling doing legos and puzzles 
so more in depth i've been loving graphic novels you guys know i have a whole video of me reading different types of graphic novels these are the books that i want to read soon so reading has really helped me just dive into stories and i kind of forget about my worries and i just i calm down and i get into the world of the book and i kind of forget what I'm stressing about so I think reading has really really helped me just kind of dive into the world or the story and it makes me think less of my intrusive thoughts um so reading has for sure helped puzzles I actually um have been making a lot of puzzles um I finally put I actually in my last vlog I did this puzzle here and I've been framing them and now they're they can be like nice decor I feel like doing something tactile with my hands have made me like just focus on things with my hands and not my intrusive thoughts and my overthinking brain so I think doing a puzzle has really helped me just focus on the the task at hand so reading has really helped I love graphic novels because they're an easy read I love the images and I'm a really, one thing about me is I have the most intensive concentration in the world. Um, so being able to concentrate on something, I can forget about the real world for a second and be less, you know, in my head. So puzzles have been a really great thing. I actually want to show you guys the puzzle that I did today. And it literally took four hours out of my life and I kind of forgot I was on earth. Um, and I want to show you guys this puzzle. It's actually on the table. So today, this puzzle actually took me about three, three, four hours. And it's basically, let me stand up actually. It's this Las Vegas night puzzle. It looks so beautiful. Um, and I spent many, many hours on it. And sometimes I can just feel a little bit stressed or anxious. So I like doing something tactile, like I said. And this puzzle was really fun. And it really just got me out of my brain and doing something fun and also I get a nice beautiful art piece out of it and now hopefully I can find like a huge frame to put it in and now it can be nice decor so it's kind of like a three-in-one it helps me with when I'm feeling anxious or sad it also helps me do an activity and it's a beautiful artwork to then display in my home so that's really beautiful and this is the puzzle that I've done it also came with like a little poster and this was the box I actually thrifted this for was the price for four dollars so hey maybe you can go thrifting find a nice puzzle and maybe it can help you you know de-stress or not feel as lonely and do a little nice little activity so yeah thought i would share that and i've been really enjoying puzzles and yeah we love it so basically i try to find activities that kind of got myself um not so in my head and more doing something tactile so reading like i said i usually read graphic novels um romantic novels and then i also have been listening to audiobooks on the book app on my phone and that is really nice it's like literally it's like i'm talking on the phone with someone and someone's telling me a story and i just get so into the characters the book that i'm currently reading is get a life by chloe brown and the author has like this British accent. I don't know, I love it. I feel like I'm talking to her. And I don't know, I just love listening to her British accent talk about the story. And actually the story is about a plus size black woman, which is, I'm a plus size black woman. And she has fibromyalgia and I have fibromyalgia. So I just felt like I connected with the character and it made me just forget about the world and forget about all my intrusive thoughts and it's just so relaxing. My tips I'd give to you is find an activity that kind of gets your mind off of your intrusive thoughts or your overthinking self. And I think that could really help. So I love reading graphic novels, doing puzzles. And you guys know this next one I've been talking about on my channel is building Legos. I really am trying to put an emphasis on doing something with your hands or tactile. It, I don't know, for me, it really helps me when I'm feeling very overwhelmed and anxious and stressed. Um, and Legos have really been the it girl for me and my anxiety because 
It's so much fun. You have a little booklet with instructions and you do step by step and you get all your pieces together and you make a beautiful structure. So it becomes a fun activity. It's your mind off things and also it's a beautiful little art piece. I hope to one day like display it in my home and that'd be really cool. So my collection is for sure growing and every month I'm getting more and more Lego pieces and it's just been so much fun and I've loved, you know, showing you guys time lapses of me you know doing my legos me my mind always is trapped either in the past or the future and i get overwhelmed and stressed and anxious about things like i'm scared like my let me let me grab you into my brain for a second i'm kind of going on a tangent but i'm sharing you my life and we're going through the self-care journey together but basically my brain is just I start getting very anxious and overwhelmed when I start thinking about my future or my past. Um, when I'm in the present, so I don't know why I'm thinking of the future or the past. But I start thinking like, oh, what if I never get a boyfriend? What if I, you know, it's kind of like a spiral. It starts with one thought and then it kind of just unravels and then I start panicking. But basically I'll be like, it, I have many triggers. Usually it's career-wise, um, love life-wise um or it has to do with some of my fears and my brain basically starts thinking about it and then I start overthinking and then it just and then that's when I start getting really anxious and I feel like I can't breathe so one thing that helps me not go into a spiral is doing activities that get my mind completely off those subjects and things so doing these activities really get my mind off of those things but I'll kind of get more in depth of what to do when you are in it and you're really starting to spiral but i want to kind of finish with the activities because i'm getting kind of ahead of myself but yeah so let me show you guys my little lego collection and what i've built so far and that have really helped me just decompress have fun but also relax so i'll show you guys my legos so here are my legos so far these are my little small ones that i feel like when I get my own house, I wanna like display them on a shelf, but we have an ice cream truck. We have uh, goldfish bunnies. This is a dolphin and a turtle, which kind of is a representation of me and my mom because one of my favorite animals are turtles and my mom's favorite animal is a dolphin. We have a Vespa, Mandalorian characters, Dalmatian dogs. We have this cool car and then we have this camper van and then we have this cool little pirate character. And then down here, we have this beautiful home that I did in the last vlog. And my goal is actually to create a huge Lego town. And this is like my part one to that with starting with a home. And hopefully I can get like a hospital, uh, everything that you need in a town, you know, school, everything. I want to get the whole thing, the whole shebang. And we're starting our little project. So I feel like having projects and hobbies can really help. But yeah, I love my Legos. I display them on my little TV stand here and it's great. I love it. The next thing that has really, really helped me when I'm feeling anxious or stressed is journaling. I think, like I said, one of the things that get me spiraling is when I start overthinking. So when I put all my thoughts onto paper, it kind of helps me see more clearly what is going on in my brain there's also like cool prompts that you can find online or on pinterest and that can really help you have a deeper thinking and get to know yourself better because sometimes you just you don't know how to put into words how you're feeling but sometimes having questions to deeper to have deeper knowledge about yourself can really help um every day i write um, how my day goes, how I'm feeling. I write a to-do list because sometimes I can really get very overwhelmed when I have so many things to do and I don't know where to start. So writing everything down that's in my brain, whatever I'm thinking, I put it on um, my, I put it in my journal and I have stickers to make it fun. And I also put um, different like Polaroid pictures. These are like the sticker ones, um, which are from, where's my little machine? It's a little machine that's kind of like a, it's a HP sprocket and basically you can print like Polaroid pictures in a sticker form and then you're able to print them and stick them to a journal or anything. So I put pictures and also I have the worst memory. So looking back at this, I'm able to see what I've done and 
just put everything that's in my brain onto paper. I also put my budget tracker in here. So I really just put everything that's in my brain into here and it helps my brain decompress and therefore not feel as overwhelmed and not feel as anxious. So one of the things that I love to do when I'm feeling just hopeless and anxious is I like to write down what I can do about it, what I can control. So I like to write down what I can work on and what I can control. Cause sometimes I get stressed about things in the future or um, if I'm ever gonna find a husband and I like, girl, can you control when your husband gonna pop up? No, what can you do? How about you write that? So um, I usually, every time that I feel very anxious or overwhelmed, I write what I can work on and I do like little poet forms. So I kind of write the things that I'm very overwhelmed about and then I write the solutions to them or what I can do for them. The thing that has really helped me when it comes to journaling is writing down everything that is stressing me out, everything that is making me super anxious. I cross off the things that I can't control and I can't do anything about and the things that I can do something about it, I write a solution and I get to work. A couple things that have really made me super anxious or I feel like are kind of my triggers for overthinking and being very anxious. Um, I have three things that I feel like I always have on my mind and that always kind of get me spiraling a lot of the times. And it's three things. Usually it's my fear of working slash ergophobia. If you don't know what that is, it's a fear of working. I had a very traumatic experience at my first job and it made me very anxious and scared when it comes to working. Um, and I feel like I always end up stressing about it and overthinking about it. And that doesn't help. <laughs> like me just like, you know going crazy about it it's not going to help my situation i'm not going to get any better um and so writing it down helps me be more aware of it but then i also write solutions for it so i'm currently in therapy for it and i also look for jobs every monday and wednesdays also i do have youtube that is kind of a job um but uh yeah that's one of the things that are kind of my triggers i don't think i've ever talked about it online and not a lot of people know that about me but i do have ergophobia um and i'm working through it through therapy and it's doing pretty well i've been applying to jobs and i've been working super hard on my youtube as well so instead for for years i just had that in the back of my mind or i would push through things that made me super uncomfortable but now i've been kind of putting it in the forefront i put it in my journal and i've been working on it my second thing is my fear of driving um i think i've talked about it a little bit on my channel but i also had a traumatic experience learning to drive so i kind of avoided it at all costs and now i have driving classes that are starting this month and i'm also in therapy for it so we are working on it i wasn't able to focus on these things because i never put it in the forefront i never wrote it down i never confronted it and i feel like Ever since I started my self-care journey and trying to focus on myself, I feel like I was able to look inwards and be like, okay, why am I like this? Why do I think like this? What can I do? What can I control and work on? And let's get crunking, okay? Because I can't be just anxious all the time, scared of everything. Like, girl, I'm scared of working and driving. Those are like the two things that kind of make you an adult, you know? But now I'm working on them and I feel like I've been bettering myself in every aspect of my life and I'm very happy for it. Sorry that I'm going on many tangents, but we're besties. And then the other thing that I want to work on slash I always kind of, it's kind of a trigger for me is my health. I do have many health issues. I have PCOS, fibromyalgia, um, and those two things. I feel like I'm missing something. Fibromyalgia, PCOS. And I occasionally have constochondritis. It's like inflammation right here. So basically I do have many health issues. So because I have many health issues, it, it makes me kind of hyper fixate on my health and very obsessive. And I sometimes overdo things. So I try to kind of scale back and work on the things that I can control. And I'm really trying to work on that and work on scaling down calming down and focusing on myself 
So that's another thing that I kind of wrote down in my journal and that I've been journaling about and that has been helping me get through it. So journaling has really helped. And um, if you are feeling very anxious, maybe write down how you're feeling. And I think what really helps is finding the core of it. Like, why are you feeling like this? What could it be? Was it someone? Um, also kind of see like the patterns. I feel like I get very anxious when I think or experience something with my triggers. So work, driving, um, or my health, those are kind of my triggers. And now that I know that, I feel like I'm better prepared and more aware. So hopefully I'm making sense. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of all over the place, but hopefully you're getting at least something out of all of this. But journaling has really, really helped me. And I feel like you guys have been seeing in all my vlogs. I always journal every single day. And when does this journal start? I started this journal in April and I've had, I think I've really, really started journaling since like January. So it's already been like a good six, seven months of me journaling almost every single day. Um, I've also, it's almost been a year since I've been reading every single day. So my hobbies and activities have really helped me with my anxiety. And I find that I've been way, way, way less anxious with these activities. So I totally recommend you try it and see if it works for you. I also want to let you guys know that the things that have worked for me might not work for you, but hopefully you can try it and see if it helps. Um, and also, I am not a health professional, so... Take everything I say with a grain of salt, okay? Okay. The next slash like last activity that I do that helps me with anxiety is meditation. I think it really helps me ground myself. Um, and the meditation that my therapist recommended for me when I'm feeling super anxious and overwhelmed is a grounding um, exercise. More specifically, I think it's called an anchor meditation. Um, don't quote me on that. It's something to do with an anchor. And basically, it's a meditation to help you ground yourself. And basically, it's separated in like three categories. The first one is how are you feeling? Um, so usually I'll close my eyes and I will breathe deeply and I will ask myself how I'm feeling. Um, am I feeling happy? What are my plans today? How am I feeling? Am I feeling happy, sad, um, motivated, tired? anxious if i'm feeling anxious why was it um i had a horrible conversation with someone or um i was working on my trauma and it really made me anxious so usually the first thing is how i'm feeling and my emotions and what are coming up for me and what are what is happening in my core and then the second thing is how i'm like how is my body so then I start focusing on my body and how it feels, how every part of my body, how it feels. So basically, I kind of close my eyes and I feel or try to visualize how my head feels. And then I go from my head all the way to my toes. And that really, really grounds me. And it reminds me that, hey, you are a little human on this earth. Relax relax you are a human being that has emotions and has a body that is breathing and helping you be alive every day and i feel like that meditation really grounds me and reminds me girl relax so first part how am i feeling what emotions are coming up for me second is how my body is feeling if i'm feeling sore anywhere i try to go from my head to my toes and then the third one is my surrounding and my environment I start looking around and seeing every little detail. I also try to focus on sound. So what am I hearing? What am I seeing? What's in front of me? And I think that part of the meditation really makes me realize like, I'm in my room right now. What am I doing? What am I up to? And centering myself. Hopefully I kind of described the meditation well. Um, I've divided it well, it's divided in three parts. And I think there's actually another exercise for anxiety that has to do with your senses. So basically you try to describe five things in each sense. So five things you're smelling. And if you can't think of five, at least try to think more than one. And that helps you focus on your environment and yourself and not on your intrusive thoughts or what's making you anxious. So it can be like five smells, um, five things you can taste, um five things you can see so five objects you can see and 
all the senses. So yeah, that might help when you are feeling very overwhelmed. I think it helps you center yourself. So meditation, different. there's many different meditations. Um, totally search it up on YouTube and better professionals that can explain it better than me. But a lot of meditations can help with anxiety because it helps you ground yourself and really see in yourself and in your core. So I feel like that could help you. And it has for sure helped me and ground myself. And also, I feel like meditating has helped me realize that, like, it helps me realize what I'm feeling. Sometimes you're feeling it and you don't even know why, but sitting down and actually trying to figure it out helps you, one, acknowledge and validate yourself and tell yourself, like, it's okay to feel like that and also to know the why, you know? So I feel like meditation has really helped with that and maybe it can help you. Um, another activity that has really helped me um, keep my mind off things is YouTube videos and TV shows. And also just like my YouTube, I feel like filming, editing, thinking of ideas have really helped me just put my mind into something else. And then also watching my favorite YouTubers like Remy Ashton, Alicia Marie, um, Claudia Solowski, Tara Michelle, and a bunch of others. Like I watch YouTube like every single day. It really has gotten into my routine. Also TV shows just kind of get my mind off the things. The day I'm filming this, it's July 1st and Stranger Thing Volume 2 is out. So I will be watching this after I finish filming this video. Um, so yeah, TV shows have really just helped me get into the characters, get into the show or movie. And I kind of forget about life for a second. So that has really helped me um, kind of get my mind off things. Also, one big thing that has helped me with my anxiety and stress and all the negative things is therapy. Um, I really suggest that if you can uh, get a therapist, um, I know it can be very expensive, um, but if you can get a therapist, um, I strongly recommend it to everyone. Um, and I hate that stigma that it says that you need to have something wrong with you to get a therapist. No, no. It's someone to talk to you that is neutral ground and is able to give you tools. My therapist has really helped me find tools that can help me better myself and become the best version of myself. And also she helped me really figure out my values. And one of my values is being at home in my body and figuring out myself and my brain and how it works. So I strongly recommend therapy. I feel like um, you can, the therapist can help you find tools to better yourself. Um, and that's, and that's just great. I love my therapist so much and I'm so happy and fortunate that I can have one. So I strongly advise it if you are able to get one. Um, and yeah, th therapy is great, girl. Chef's kiss. I really hope that we can get to a place where therapy can be free or affordable for everyone in the world because that would be phenomenal. The last few things that I'm going to talk about is more um, talking to someone that you trust about how you're feeling. I feel like when you are feeling anxious or you're feeling a strong emotion, a lot of us tend to keep it to ourselves because you don't want it to be a burden to someone. Maybe that's just me, but I've really learned that talking to someone can help you figure out what's going on in your brain, but also it's someone that can soothe you and, and you know, comfort you. But also, even though talking to someone can really be helpful, you got to make sure that they're ready and emotionally there and ready for you to talk to them about any strong feelings you're having. So before having a conversation with someone you trust, it could it could be very helpful to communicate to them and like assure that they are ready to hear what you have to say. Because I feel like sometimes we use our besties and we just really dump every problem we have and then that becomes a burden to them and it becomes heavy on them. So I feel like asking them like, hey, are you ready? Are you emotionally ready to... Do you think you can emotionally hear what I have to say? And if they are... I feel like that can be a great way to kind of let out your emotions to someone in a safe space and safe environment. Um, I know that I love talking to my mom and my best friend and they help me kind of figure out what's going on in my brain and they just help me feel better and they soothe me by talking to them.
We love that. So talk to someone you trust, but before you talk to them, make sure that they are ready to hear what you have to say. Okay? Okay. The last and final thing that I feel like that has helped me when I'm feeling super anxious or down is trying something new or going to something new. I feel like sometimes if I'm too much in the same routine, I'm a person that likes a routine that changes. So when I feel like stuck and I feel like I'm doing the same thing, that's when I kind of start getting too into my head. So I try every week slash month to try something new. If it's a new restaurant, if it's a new place, um, if it's trying something completely out of my comfort zone. Um, and that has helped me really just kind of get out of my head, get out of my room and do something fun that gets my mind off of things. So those are a few things that have really helped me feel at home in my body, feel better about myself and also just be way less anxious. Hopefully one of these things can help you feel less anxious or feel good. I hope this video was somewhat helpful and I hope it made sense. If it didn't, I'm so sorry. Take what I say as a grain of salt. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this very talkative video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will, I promise to have way less talking episodes. Um, I have so many fun episodes planned and I'm really bringing you guys along this journey and hopefully you guys start your own self-care journey whenever you are ready and hopefully I am a safe space for you. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this very talkative video. I love you guys so, so much and I'll see you guys in another Swana Self-Care Sunday episode. Bye!